Okay, troubleshooting in Libri NMS. Now, if you're using Libri NMS, you've probably been around computers and software long enough to know that something will go wrong eventually. And my hope is in this video to kind of put you on the right track, or at least kind of get you in the right direction of where to look for things when things break in Libri NMS. Uh, now, I've been running Libri NMS for the past three or four years, and it's been really, really reliable. Uh, I've had really no issues with it at all, unless I'm the one that broke it so um, usually uh, you really probably if you leave it alone it'll probably just run forever unless a hardware problem happens uh, something along those lines but uh, so uh, a couple things uh, we need to look for when we start getting errors we kind of need to know where this error is starting at um, you know when you first log into Librium MS you're presented with a login page and you know so some of the things you might look for is am I even getting to this screen uh, am I even loading any page at all is it just timing out on me um, if I can log in are things not updating um, so you, you really got to know where to look for and if you couldn't see a web page here I might look at nginx you know if uh, um, I can't pull up devices or I'm missing some data in Librium MS under a device, I would probably look at the database. Um, if devices are not updating, uh, I would look at the polling, uh, see what's going on in there. So uh, luckily Librium MS gives us a couple tools to, to start looking at this. So uh, most of what you're going to be doing here is going to actually going to be in the shell. Uh, so we're just going to break a couple of things here just to see uh, what, what what we can do here. So like let's for say for example um, our web server crashed. So now if we try to go to this uh, website here, it's probably just going to load forever because obviously there's no website running there now. So, uh, you know, if you got something like this, I would start immediately looking at Nginx and, uh, you know, can I even ping this box uh, from where I'm at? Um, you know, and, and things like that. So obviously, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm seeing Nginx is not enabled, I might be seeing some errors in here. Um, there might be all, all sorts of different things you can look for, but uh, generally you just want to uh, start looking through these services and uh, maybe maybe it just crashed and you just need to restart it. Um, uh, usually it's it's nothing something that simple, but you know you get lucky. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's see if this thing starts back up now. Status. So yeah, you always want to use statuses on your um, services just to see uh, what the status is. Uh, so let's see here. Is this? Oh, I have HTTPS in here for somehow. I think it uh, tried to go to HTTPS when HTTP failed. So that's pretty cool. Oh, Firefox. Uh, so yes, admin. And now we can get to this site. So let's see what's going on here now. Now it looks like it's working fine. So um, I can get in here. Everything looks like it's polling fine. Uh, so maybe just the web server web server died or something. So um, now let's look at something else. Uh, there is actually a database server that Librium MS heavily relies on, and that is MariaDB. Uh, and usually you can do a status and um, and look at for any errors in here, see if it's in the active and running. Uh, and if it is, uh, it's, it's probably going to be fine, but um, we're actually going to purposely break the database. Um, and you do... How Librium MS connects into the database is in this .env file. So if you go to opt Librium MS uh, under your Librium MS user, Go to cat.env. So these, this right here is how Librium MS knows how to connect into the MariaDB database. If this is not right, then nothing's going to work. Um, so we could actually purposely break it and uh, see here. Okay, and we don't have to do anything to restart anything because basically when we load a web page, uh, the code in the background is trying to connect to the database. So if we click really on anything in Librium MS, it's, it's most likely going to make a call to the database and it's not going to be able to. So, yep, so we just clicked on anything and it says error cannot connect to the database. So uh, if I saw something like this, I would immediately start going in here, making sure no one changed this or this got messed up. And I might even try to uh, log into the database myself. Dash B, and this is password. 
I would most likely try what's over in here, but obviously this connected. And um, if, if, it, if I had the wrong username or password in here, it would have gave me an error saying you can't log in. So this, this worked fine, um, but, uh, you know, it's still not working here. It, my username and password's correct, so um, w w why it's wrong is because I changed the password in here. So obviously uh, it, when I change this back, it's going to fix it. But there's also another script that I want to see here. If, if maybe this looked fine and I could connect, and I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on here. You can always run this dot validate uh, dot PHP. I guess it's yeah dot PHP. Uh, and if you run it, it's going to do a bunch of checks in Librium MS. Just trying to connect to the database is going to verify a bunch of files. Um, but one of the first checks it does is it can't con to connect to the database. And if it can't connect to the database, you have really big problems. You need to get that working really before anything else. So um, you have to make sure that you have access into your database and that, that it's working fine. So let's get that database working just so we can see this script actually run. Okay, uh, now we can try it again. Okay, so now you can see that it said database connection successful. Uh, database schema is correct. That's also another issue I've had in the past is where when uh, somehow my code was uh, updated but my database schema wasn't uh, and it threw all sorts of errors in here but luckily it actually tells you the commands to put in there to get your schema correct and basically uh, it's just saying that the code is can possibly write to places that don't exist in the database yet and you need to fix that so uh, it's it's basically checking that now I must have done some weird thing to get in that state because usually Librium MS when it updates the code it also updates the database schema so I'm not saying you're gonna have that error but it is possible and and if you see some Something on this step where it says you know this is out of sync it's most likely somehow your code and your database got out of sync and you could actually try to run the commands they say manually on the database and get it back into sync okay and if you see here there is one warning in here and it's just saying that there's a couple dot git ignore files in here and these are pretty much harmless I, I'm not even sure why they get in here I haven't even bothered to look because they don't break anything and um, all they are are files to tell GitHub to ignore these directories, which they should be because, you know, we're writing stuff locally to our instance in these uh, directories here. So um, you can remove them. You can just do this GitHub remove, and I believe it's da dot dash D to discard these. And it's just basically saying it's going to delete all these uh, untracked and un all modified and untracked files. Okay, yes, we want to delete that. And now if we run it again, we should get no errors. Yep, so this is perfectly fine. So if I saw this, um, most likely this is going to work too. Um, and my Nginx service was fine. Uh, Nginx looked like it was working fine. Uh, I would most likely say everything's working. Um, you'd probably have to really start getting into issues now to look at it. Script, And I'll just mention this other script here. This is the daily.shell. This basically runs every day. And what it does is it just goes out to um, Librium MS and checks the code uh, and upgrades. And you can actually set that, that upgrading process to uh, a couple different values here. If you go into system global settings system and updates you'll see here it says enable updates in daily.shell so if you don't ever want to update again you're perfectly fine you don't need anything else uh, never update again because you don't want to risk breaking it with an update uh, just turn this off and this will never update the code ever again uh, but if you do want to update the code you can set this to on and then there's two options here master and release and release is kind of like a monthly release uh, they release um, so every month they kind of like stop uh, uh, taking in pull requests and kind of calm down and just make sure everything's working and then they'll make a release whereas master you're basically anytime the daily runs it's going to pull in all the latest code changes from the last 24 hours pretty much so you have a much higher chance of something breaking with master but you're also getting the latest and greatest updates all the time so uh yeah so you can do either or of these um uh, it really doesn't matter but i mean if you're going to be on a production you might want to set it to release just to be on the little safe side there um, but anyways, yeah, if you ran daily, uh, dot shell, you can do this. This runs every 24 hours, but you can do this manually. And in fact, if you look at our polar script here, uh, our polar, go to settings, polar and settings at the bottom here, actually you have to hit this advanced one here. 
uh, the advanced one here, it says daily maintenance enabled. You actually got to check this so it runs that daily script. Because in the past, if you looked at the install docs, it says to do a cron tab. But we didn't we didn't do that on our instance. We used the dispatcher service. So we got to check this box here that's saying run that daily script every day. So yeah, this daily script basically runs every day. Uh, and it'll go about its thing and you'll never really have an issue with it. But usually dispatcher service or the polling is where I have really the main issue here. Uh, and usually I check that by just going to this, the status of the Libre MS service. Uh, and if it's running, that's a really good sign. Uh, and usually, because I don't have a lot of devices in here, you're not seeing a lot of... Um, things under here you'll actually see all the polar scripts running underneath here and you would also see it if you did like a top uh, and looked in here well I don't have the, the table big enough but yeah you would see uh, like a bunch of uh, polar.phps and a bunch of stuff in here if you had a bunch of devices so I usually go in there and look and just see if I see that and you can also check the logs too that's another good place to look uh, logs and then tail librianms.log and you can just compare the timestamps and if you're seeing these devices polled uh, yeah this thing is polling I mean it's polling and it's updating the database and uh, it shouldn't be having a problem now if you didn't see this update for a long time uh, you know and the timestamp is like more than five minutes uh, I would start looking at this and maybe even just restart this Librian MS service it might have just got hung up or something uh, and that would should kick it off again uh, and if it doesn't it usually gives you an error right at the beginning what the issue is uh, it, it'll say I couldn't start because of whatever uh, so you would just keep on looking at that and troubleshooting it that way. Now another issue you might have here is with the graphs. Uh, you might be able not to load graph data and in troubleshooting this I was playing around with the graphs and I uh, <laughs> broke these. So this kind of gives you a good example like if you if you loaded a graph and you didn't see any data in here it might be because Libyan MS can't read that data. So usually when I'm having graphing issues I do this show RRD command here. Just click on any graph and you do that show RRD command here and you'll see that it's going out to this socket here to uh, fetch the RRD graph information uh, and it's saying that it's okay so let me just stop the um, the RRD cache D service right. I need to get into the root user okay and now let me refresh this so this gave me an error here at the bottom unable to connect to RRD cache D because obviously it can't because I stopped the service so it's trying to reach out to there but there's nothing listening so it's not working now this graph is actually still displaying so I think this <laughs> command is a little confusing. Now, it's definitely broken. Uh, you shouldn't have it in this state, but I think because the RRD files are living on this web server that I'm running, I have everything on one box. It can still read it in that one file. There must be something in the code that says if you can't connect, just look in the RRD directory of the local, you know, uh, LibreMS RRD here. RRD, see? It'll just look in this directory, and since they're all in here anyway, it's just, it's just, um, going and picking it up off there. Now, when we move our RD to another server off of here, uh, this wouldn't work then because it can't read it in the local directory anymore. It has to fetch it over there. There's no files in here. They would all be blank. So this is definitely not a good sign. And you definitely need to figure out why RD is, is broken and fix it. So really, that's a majority of the things you might run into, or at least get you on the right track of troubleshooting stuff. Uh, there is this one last thing. Uh, you go under Settings here and Validate Config, and this will kind of just uh, make sure that you don't have anything maybe mistyped or, or messed up in your config. And uh, usually, if everything's working fine, this will all come back okay like this. And I've never actually had to really use this too much, but it is there in case you need it. Anyways, that just about wraps it up for troubleshooting in Librium MS. Uh, again, thank you for watching watching.